wet sump versus dry sump, some of the key differences and some of the advantages of each system. G'day, I'm Matt from KCK Lubricants and today we're going to have a quick run over of the differences between wet and dry sump. We'll start with the wet sump setup. As the name suggests, the engine sump carries the capacity of the engine oil. This is your typical road car setup. This has mainly drawbacks over advantages. Other than being cheap to manufacture, it's, uh, it's, it's not suitable generally for performance. The first thing is the size. The physical size of the sump is, is often as big as the block itself. You can see here, this is normally where the cross member or the steering arms would go. And this is incredibly low. And, and aside from the exhaust is often the lowest part of the car. The next thing we have a problem with is oil surge. As you increase the performance or use it at the track, if you stand on the brakes, the oil will tend to go to the front of the engine under hard acceleration to the back of the engine and cornering will go either way. And you can see here the oil pump and the suction screen. So as soon as that oil moves away, you are now sucking air instead of oil, which is a major drawback. Another critical thing that affects the horsepower and especially at high RPM is windage. So windage is the crankshafts now spinning in submerged oil or aerated oil and almost like a foam. So if you could imagine the oil coming out from the bearings, from the main bearings, the Conrod bearings, as well as what's draining back from the top of the engine, hitting that crankshaft spinning at 8,000 RPM, it's now tends to swirl the oil around inside the engine as well as the rotating crankshaft will try to pull the oil from the sump and pull it up the side of the engine as well. So if you could imagine the difference between spinning a crankshaft at 8,000 RPM in free air versus spinning that same crankshaft semi-submerged in oil, it robs a great deal of horsepower and also aerates the oil. So the oil pump is no longer sucking clean oil as such, but aerated oil and pulling air through the oiling system as well. Another problem we have is the temperature. Hugely governed by this is the part of the engine that creates the temperature, the, the backside of the pistons and such. And if we keep that oil the same distance from what's causing the heat, we tend to have um, similar oil regardless, similar oil temperatures, regardless of the capacity. Um, the capacity itself, even if you yeah, enlarge the sump, makes the oil surge worse and will just take longer to get to operating temperature, but the operating temperature will often be very similar to where it was before. Now there is ways we can improve the wet sump. We can use oil scrapers. So this is placed between the engine block and the sump. And as the crankshaft comes around, it's to help um, eliminate the windage, to, to stop the rotating effect of the engine oil. So it'll come up, splash the oil to the back side of this, and it will return to sump. So that's a scraper, and um, very handy, very cheap, um, and does also increase horsepower. The other way about it is this is, this is basically a competition wet sump. And as you can see, Size is still an issue, it's very large in capacity, um, very deep, um, causing ground clearance issues. But inside, we now have baffles, you can just see them in there. They have swinging gates to allow the oil in to the center chamber where the pickup is, but not allowed out again. This screen and this scraper here is once again to control windage and try to get the oil to catch into the side and run back to the sump. So that's one way to go about performance wet sumps. As you can see, it's, it's quite, a, quite a large thing, um, which dry sumps uh, really come into their own in, in size-wise. So we'll go into that next. The same engine now fitted with a dry sump setup. And you'll notice straight away, the engine oil capacity is no longer stored under the engine. It's got its own separate tank. Meaning we can get rid of that large bulky engine sump that we originally had. We no longer need the pickup and we no longer need the oil pump. So we've just gained six to 10 inches of ground clearance. We can 
allow the engine in the chassis to, to help with the center of gravity, we can now move the engine back without fouling on steering or suspension components. Oil pump is now belt driven off the crankshaft. These are commonly sandwich style pumps, so we can run multiple scavengers or multiple pressures depending on what we need. This particular drawing is a three stage scavenge. So it draws oil straight from the bottom of the oil pan. Now this oil pan only needs to be deep enough just to miss the rotating components of the engine. It draws all the oil through the scavenge and then returns it back to the oil tank. You'll notice the returns on these generally are set up to swirl the oil around the outside of the tank. The oil that's drawing from the bottom of the crankcase is now heavily aerated. So we need to separate the air and the oil and swelling it around the tank is very efficient to do this. These tanks are unlimited capacity. We can put them wherever we like in the car. We can use them to offset the driver's weight. We can put them in the rear of the car. They are generally round, tall and skinny. Now this is to help with oil surge. Very hard to get the oil to slosh away from the pickup if the tank is, is tall and skinny. These may have several baffles within inside the tank, which also helps with this. Why do we run multiple scavenge stages to one pressure stage? The more oil we can get out of the crankcase, the less windage we'll have and the more power we'll make. If we can even draw enough out of the crankcase that we lower the crankcase pressure, we can run lower tension on the, on the oil seals. We can even run lower tension oil rings without fear of oil consumption issues. And this will increase horsepower just from the reduced friction. The temperature of the oil is now easily monitored. It's away from the heat source of the engine. So we may even need to fit a heater to the tank to monitor um, minimum oil temperatures, but it's got a much better chance of cooling being further away from the car. The pressure side of the pump picks up from the bottom of the oil tank through the pressure side and depending on the application this could go off to a remote filter to the filter block on the on the engine itself um, and even back into the main oil gallery but that's a quick breakdown on the differences between wet and dry sump and some of the advantages subscribe i hope it was helpful if you liked the video give it a thumbs up any suggestions on future content leave a comment below we do check it thanks for watching